All right, the goop coated directions are for small quantities, mix seven parts cleaned with steel wool and treated with the marine prosphoric prosphoric acid wash such as prosphoric acid wash such surface preparation for small quantities until you have a clean surface. Steel and or aluminum bolts should. All right, it is come time to seal these rivets up on this boat. Uh, I am going to be using Glove It. I came across a good deal on it. Uh, usually a can this size is around 80 bucks shipped. And I came across some for, I wanna say it's like 53 bucks on eBay. And that's still a little bit more than the goop coated stuff, but uh, it's pretty, pretty good price for it. So that's why I went ahead and went with it. Uh, I still have some of the coated stuff left and what i'd like to do is kind of a side by side comparison i have some signs i'm going to cut them in half and then prep the surface real good like you're supposed to like it recommends and then just do a layer of each one uh, probably two because uh, both of them recommend two coats and uh, I don't know, maybe try to do some kind of test on them, a side-by-side -side test. Uh, you know, this isn't going to be that scientific, but uh, I, I think I'm, I'm kind of interested to see which one holds up better. I mean, maybe I'm hang it up and just add weights to it to see which one fails first. And I thought about actually on one end drilling some holes and just putting that stuff in to maybe see how well it fills up the holes too. I don't know. I just thought it'd be interesting. I have a lot of people that ask me about the glove it and the coat it stuff. So it'll be a, a maybe not as in depth as like a project farm uh, comparison, but uh, maybe we can get some kind of information out of it. If nothing else, we're going to glove it the rivets on this boat in this video. Uh, I'm still waiting on it to come in, which I do have a, a good amount of this right here that I can use, but the other stuff that I ordered from eBay hasn't come in yet. Well, all right. Uh, Without further ado, let's get into it. All right, the directions for the goop coated are for small quantities, mix seven parts of A and one part of B by weight, not volume. A clean, freshly sanded surface is essential cr to creating a good bond. Remove all contaminants such as oil, grease, dirt, and old coating. Sand until you have a clean surface. It also recommends to use a prosphoric acid wash such as navel jelly or Alumabrite to remove any rust or oxidation. May be applied to dry or poor surfaces. Mixing. Stir part A container of coated until uniform consistency occurs. Pour part B into part A container. Sufficient stirring and mixing is the most important step for satisfactory results with coated. Mix with fold into center motion. Mix entire contents roughly for six to seven minutes. Occasionally scrape the bottom and sides of mixing container as well as the mixing stick. Mixed material should be used within 30 minutes. After mixing thoroughly, immediately pour material onto working surface. Do not leave mixed material in original container. Application. Application can be readily completed with a tooth trowel, squeegee, short bristle throwaway brush, or foam roller. Working time is approximately 30 minutes. Adequate cure time is approximately 10 to 12 hours at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Minimum application temperature is 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Application surface temperature range is 50 degrees Fahrenheit to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Cure time decreases with higher temperatures. Thicker coats cure faster than thin coat. A second coat of coated may be applied after the initial 10 to 12 hour cure period. For maximum ultraviolet protection, allow coated to Cure thoroughly, sand lightly, and apply a good grade marine paint. The manufacturer's directions for Glove It are remove contaminants such as grease, oil, dirt with lacquer thinner or strong detergent, sand to bare surface with 80 to 100 grit sandpaper, fill deep holes and imperfection with marine text putty before applying Glove It. And if you're going to use the full can, you uh, just add the catalyst to the can and mix thoroughly for three to four minutes. If you want to mix it separately, you know, in a smaller volume, you mix ratio by volume is five parts resin to one part catalyst. Pot life is 90 minutes at 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Apply with brush or roller over suspected leaks. The entire area should be coated to ensure leak-free repair. After first coat cures for 12 hours at 72 degrees Fahrenheit, a second coat can be applied for optimum performance. 
Glove it hardens overnight. Allow 48 hours at 72 degrees for maximum strength. Working time and cure time will be longer at lower temperatures, shorter at higher temperatures. Note if ambient temperature is below 50 degrees, precondition glove it to 72 degrees and work area until at least 50 degrees. Glove it may be applied over mildly damp and not wet surfaces. All right, so the second coat's been on these for about 48 hours. And as you can tell, it's a huge difference in what it looks like between the glove it and the coated. The coated is a dark, almost like a graphite color, and the glove it is almost like a blonde, semi clear. I mean, the first coat is a little more clear, and once you put the other coat on, it gets that yellow hue to it. When we flip them over, you can kind of see that they both did seep through some through the crack because it wasn't just a perfect joint on these. And then you can see not too much on this because of the color, but both of them went through the holes. Uh, it looks like this one was a little bit thicker, but that could have been because of, you know, might've been kicked up a little bit. Uh, but also you have to remember if you're filling up a hole, these were laying on something flat. So they had something to fill up to. If it's just on the side of the boat and you try to put it in there, it's gonna keep pouring out. Uh, this is just regular paper, like for your kitchen, like Reynolds paper. And uh, this stuff didn't stick to it. I mean, probably tell this stuff comes right right up. So it could be some way to do it, to get a piece of this and just tape to the side of your boat on the opposite side. And uh, then goop some of this stuff on if you're just trying to fill a, a hole just to get you on the water. But anyhow, that's what the final product you know, obviously both of them seal good, all the, the holes and the cracks. I'm going to try and figure out a way to test this stuff. I thought maybe just hanging it up and just adding weights to it to see which one pulled apart first. I wish I had a way to, to measure like the pounds of how much force it would take to, to push these holes out. But I really, I'm not set up to do anything like that. So I might've just been a waste other than, you know, see how well it filled them holes up. All right, uh, let's uh, see if we can't break these. All right, I rigged this up to my garage door. Hopefully I don't tear anything up on my garage door. Just gonna add weights to this chain and try to pull this seam apart. And uh, I guess I'm gonna start at like 10 pounds and then work it up from there and see what happens. And if it don't break, I don't wanna put too much weight on it. Like I said, I don't wanna tear up my garage door. But if it gets too heavy, we might have to go to a plan B Try a different experiment. So here we go. Ten pounds. Save on time. I'm just gonna start at 45 with the glove one. You can see there ain't no kind of stress or anything with either one of these. I mean, that ain't wasn't the heaviest weight in the world, but honestly, I was kind of hoping one of them would break to give me some kind of results because I don't want to keep on adding 45 pound plates. I'm too lazy to go in there and get my other three that I have in my workout room. So uh, let's try something else. All right, so I'm pretty sure this test is gonna get it done. I have the seam just past this board, and I'm gonna do like I did earlier and just gradually add weights. Probably gonna be significantly less weight on this. So I'm gonna start out with five pounds. Hopefully that ain't too much. Ten pounds. 
Might want to grab a two and a half. Broke at 15. How much we can really see. I wish I had a micrometer to see how thick this was. All right, let's get the glove. Two and a half. Let's try to knock these out from the back just to see what happens, how each one breaks. I wish I had a way to measure the pounds of force to break the seal, but I don't. So I'm just going to take like a, a chisel and push in here just to try to break it out and just see how, how it breaks if they break differently or the same. be honest with you guys it didn't take as much force as i thought it was going to but this is also a pretty sharp little punch i wish i had something a little more blunt but this is what i came up with well, i'd like to say the glove it did a little bit better in that test as janky as a test as it is but uh it didn't explode like the coat it did. I don't know, I, I'd give the slight edge to that. Like I said, this is a pretty janky little test, but the way that one just kind of broke loose like it did compared to this one, I guess I could go ahead and do the other two to see if they were the same. That one did exactly the same. and broke through. All right, so again, this one just kind of shattered like the other side. I feel like the glove had held up a little bit better on that test. Like I said, this I don't think his test is that, <laughs> that scientific, but there you have it. In the last video, we went ahead and halfway prepped the surface of this boat because we sanded it with 80 grit and we also washed it with soap and water and let it dry so really that's all that glove it calls for a grease and wax remover i mean we pretty much degreased it because i used the detergent uh, but since it's been sitting in here for a little bit and i would do it anyways i'm going to go ahead and wipe down all the spots that i'm going to put this with some acetone and then go ahead and apply it so let's go ahead and knock that out real quick Right, it says you can apply this stuff with just a cheap throwaway brush and that's what i'm using just brush it on all the spots and uh let it dry let's knock it out One thing about Glove It, uh, it is, it's a lot thinner than the, the Goop stuff. So you might want to come back every so often 
and try to check for drips and runs. Kind of hard to see these in the lighting, but it's a little bit of sag right there like it's trying to drip. Just come along and smooth those out. I mean, it ain't the end of the world, but it will show up in your paint job after that stuff dries. After doing the little test, I had some of that coat it left, so I did the back bottom part of this boat just so I wouldn't waste it. And it does not sag near as much, but it will sag some, so keep an eye on it too if you're using Coat It. Because both of them's gonna sag on you, but that glove it is just a little bit thinner and has more chance to run. The stuff on the, the bottom part of the boat or where it's laying flat, you don't have to worry about it, but these side rivets or anything like on a vertical surface, you'll have to keep an eye on it or it's gonna <laughs> give you some run. It'll look like you got runs in your paint is what it's gonna look like after you get it painted. All right, let's let this set up and then we'll get another coat of the glove it on. All right, we have got one coat on all the rivets and it says to wait 12 hours between coats. So it's kind of early in the morning. I'm off work today, so might come out here later on and put the final coat on. We got two coats on here. So we are done with the bottom of the boat and the epoxy. Just have to keep an eye on it for a while. And make sure it doesn't drip, which is kind of a pain in the butt to do this stuff. Glove, it doesn't harden up very fast. So you kind of got to come out here every, I don't know, 45 minutes and check on it. And I mean, it finally, Tacks up and stops sagging maybe, I don't know, in a few hours. So, anyhow, we're done. All right, so what did we learn? We learned that Chris hasn't been using his gym for the right purposes. I feel like I'm too lazy to put these weights back up. I wish the little stretch test would have went a little bit better. I apparently need a lot more weight. Um, I feel like that's a little bit better test than the the stress test of the, of the breaking, right at the breaking point. I mean... Uh, the coat it did do better by a little bit on that, uh, but it's also a thicker epoxy. It just goes on thicker. Does that is that why it held up better? I'm not sure. And the other little punch test, uh, you know, the I'd say the glove it, you know, I give it the edge. I wish I had a better way of really doing that. But just the way that that coat it shattered, it just lets you know that it didn't adhere to the metal as good as the glove it did. It looks like the glove it really adhered to it because all it did is basically put a little pinhole in it. I mean, if I had whacked it another time, you know, maybe it would have, but I mean, I, I don't know. None of this is <laughs> very scientific. Y'all holler at Project Farm and tell him he needs to do a boat epoxy test on his channel. He goes a lot, he goes really in depth on his stuff. I don't have the means or funds to do so. But I think either one is, is good epoxy. I will say, uh, like if you're wanting to paint your boat a light color, uh, you might not want to go with, with coat it because it's so dark and it's, you're going to have to paint extra coats, you know, on any of them spots to cover that, that dark graphite color up. Whereas the glove, it is, you know, kind of clear, it's clearish blonde. It'd be easier to, to cover up anyhow. Uh, but, you know, I think either product is, is a good choice. Um, I've been using glove it. I know I used coated on that little beater boat I did uh, just because it was cheap. Uh, for whatever reason, if I cannot find Glove It or I just need to save 20 or 30 bucks, I will go with the Coat It. I think either one is, is a good choice. And of course, we got all the rivets on this boat coated in this episode. So that that's done. And it's actually, I mean, it's standing here next to it now. And it's the Glove It really adhered well. I will say this, uh, just so you guys know, someone actually mentioned it to me in a comment, I think on uh, Instagram. But, uh, I've had it happen to me before too. Sometimes when you do glove it, it's like it doesn't want to harden up all the way. It'll still be tacky even like three or four days later. Uh, I don't know if that's like a mixing issue, a weather issue or what. But uh, the first coat, it was definitely warm. And it was in the 70s, 75, maybe 80. But the second coat I put on was pretty pretty cool. It was probably in the 50s. It might have been, you know, 60, 60s in my garage. But... Uh, it was definitely below what they recommend and i mean it's it's 100 dry very slick finish so i like glove it if you don't want to use glove it i know some people uh, i've talked to said that they have actually had some problems with glove it where they're trying to seal up seams and rivets so that's all that's a lot to do i don't know if it has 
anything to do with it or not, but my experience has worked great. I'll continue to use it. I'm not saying don't get coated. I said I ain't had any problems with the glove. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. All right, guys, up next is the paint. I already got it here, and I've got an issue with it. <laughs> this little boat is going to fight me, apparently, with everything. But uh, we're going to resolve it, hopefully, and uh, go ahead and rock and roll with this boat. I appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you on the next one.